so uh, I'm in Tucson, Arizona. I have been attending the, uh, the Science of Consciousness uh, meeting. Um, I've been coming here quite regularly. I, I think this is my sixth, seventh time in Tucson. Um, the, I'm really grateful for all the efforts that the organizers have put into this conference. Stuart Hamanoff and David Chalmers in the early days and all these wonderful people, uh, Christoph Koch and um, Daniel Dennett and, you know, all these people who have been contributing to, to the science of consciousness and I have been enjoying this conference for a long time now. Um, so it's 30 years since the first conference and the first time I came here was probably 1996, so it has been an incredible journey. And um, I think the greatest thing that this conference helped in realizing is that consciousness studies is now a day job. It can, it can be your day job. Uh, it is now quite acceptable to study uh, neuroscience, neurophysiology, neuropsychology uh, in the context of consciousness. And this has been great. There have been many interesting ideas, most notably uh, had the heart problem and neural creative consciousness. And there have been some theoretical attempts at elucidating the foundations of consciousness, such as integrated information theory and global workspace theory. So I think this, this idea is having really fruitful in elucidating the kind of strategy that we need to take to clarify what consciousness is all about. Having said that, I do feel that we haven't actually made a really substantial progress. And I think people do admit that. I was talking with um, some young students and scholars yesterday, and they were probably of the same impression. Um, you know, it's great that young generations are coming into this field. Um, the same is happening in Japan as well. Uh, I am um, a senior researcher at the Sony Computer Science Laboratory and also teach at the University of Tokyo, where I have two master's students and two PhD, uh, three PhD students, and I have a lab on collective intelligence, together with my great friend Takashi Kikami. Um, I am sometimes contacted by young people who are genuinely interested in the enigma of consciousness. So, you know, young people are coming into this field. Uh, but, you know, I should say that, when, especially when I talk with young people, I think they expect more and I expect more. Uh, I'm not young, to be precise, but uh, I expect more from this field. And I do feel that some uh, enigmas are still there and we are still not um, you know, blessed with a uh, definitive theory of consciousness. Oh, this is cockty. <laughs> I'm not saying that integrated information theory is, is true to science. I think it's a misnomer. I don't think that's a proper way to uh, go with uh, scientific criticism. But I do feel that um, we are missing something still. Uh, we do need some fundamental principles to understand consciousness and I feel that I probably would like to contribute something. Um, I have, you know, I'm kind of outborn out. I don't feel that I belong to the mainstream of consciousness studies. My ideas tend to be kind of, um, you know, different from um, the majority of people in the room. And I probably need to express my ideas more um, rigorously and clearly. But, um, you know, I think it's great to have diversity in the field. Um, not only me, but um, many other people who have their own approach to consciousness and um, I think the Tucson conferences uh, have 
achieved a degree of diversity, a really wonderful diversity, uh, in embracing all different kinds of people with different approaches to the field. I, and I think that's really largely due to the great personality of Stuart Hamlet. And I'm really grateful to Stuart Hamlet for that. Um, now, um, I said that this conference probably has made a really great contribution in making consciousness studies a day job. But um, I see a way to enlarge its support base, if you like. Um, that is to focus on the wellness, happiness of people. I think, uh, and this has been pointed out by many people already, that um, consciousness studies can be a foundation for, you know, elucidating the mechanisms in which we can be happy and creative. Uh, for example, the psychological states of flow and zone, these are uh, states of consciousness and so they can be studied uh, in the larger framework of consciousness studies. So that's one way to go. Um, another way to go is to study uh, wellness-based, wellness-related uh, life habits and states of mind. And I have written a book on Ikigai, uh, that's the Japanese conception of, um, you know, the, the reason of living. And it has been well received, fortunately, in the world. And my book on Ikigai has been the number one bestseller on Spiegel bestseller list for the last 13 weeks in a row. So I'm quite happy and humbled by the news. So, so this concept of Ikigai is a Japanese word. Uh, is very much related to the state of mind that you have. So it is a culture, if you like, uh, which is cultivated in your conscious state of mind. And it has a lot to do with the uh, way your consciousness is constructed. Of course, um, everywhere in the world, consciousness is uh, supported basically by the same mechanisms, but uh, it, it can be slightly different from place to place. Um, with, even within one region, there could be individual differences, but um, I can see how Ikigai can be uh, possibly related to consciousness studies. Um, so that one way to, you know, broaden the basis for consciousness studies. And I will hope, hopefully do something about that. Um, I have been interested in Quaria and self-consciousness and so on, the hard problem of consciousness, and I have my own ideas about how to solve them. So I would like to contribute uh, my humble you know, um, ideas to the community. I, I can see myself coming to this conference for uh, the first year of the future. Uh, because I really love this conference and I really love the vibe. I love the freedom that people enjoy in this conference. Thanks to the great Stuart Hamroff. And David Chalmers is, of course, an um, iconic figure. And all these wonderful people who have different approaches to consciousness, but committed to the same enigma of human existence. I think that's simply great. So I will come to this conference as far as the earth <laughs> goes around the sun. <laughs> well, that's an exaggeration, <laughs> probably. But um, I really love this conference and I'm really grateful. And I would love to, you know, think that studying consciousness is one of the most important intellectual endeavors and also existential um, stick, I feel like, um, in this world. 
uh, we are living in a world of AI, artificial intelligence, and AI alignment, AI safety are really great issues. And artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence, all these things, singularity, all these things are ultimately related to consciousness studies, natural and artificial. So I think consciousness studies would become the focal point of human endeavor in the coming years. So that has been my summing up of this conference and I am really happy and thank you again, Stuart Hamilton. And Hide Saegusa, oh by the way, yeah, my great friend who has helped organize this conference and all other people involved. Thank you.